Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on tonight's show, I'm pleased to have on a returning guest who last time I had him on was right actually before the season from last year, and now the same thing this year from Bristol Central, Coach Papazian. Coach, great to be able to have you on the podcast again, man. Thanks for having me, Chris. Always, always fun coming on and getting to talk with you. Coach, last year was such a successful season for Bristol Central and for Bristol Central sports in general. You had the football team being able to make the playoffs. I know they lost to Maloney. Obviously, the basketball team had a fantastic run winning the title, uh, you know, as I mentioned, for boys. Then you had softball make it all the way to the final. I know they faced a very tough Southington team. But real quick before we get into football, just to be a part of what was such a successful year for sports, I'm sure I'm missing others too, and I apologize for that. But that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I think, just uh... – uh, a collection of some real talented kids who were who were hard workers, um, you know, in school, out of school, and and um, you know the coaching staffs of all those sports obviously did a, a tremendous job, like you said, with the, the basketball team winning the whole thing. Um, but you need players at the end of the day. You know, we've had some had some good fortune with some some real talented kids coming through the doors the last couple of years. And coach, you've had a lot of talented kids run through the program. I mean, one of them being Dathan Hickey, who's still at Yale and doing fantastic work. Whatever he decides to do, football or his second career, he's going to be fantastic. There's other players as well. Victor Rosa, who's now at UConn, and I expect to see him lighting up, uh, you know, the college football in the not too distant future. And speaking of Rosa, last season, man, I didn't realize this. Bristol Central lost the first game against Bloomfield 7-6. And then after that, you rattle off, what was it, nine wins in a row or something like that. Uh, after that first game loss, um, what was it like as far as talking to the team after? It, it was it was disappointing. We knew we were better than than that. I mean, you know, uh, offensively, mm -hmm. six points in any year is just obviously it's not gonna not gonna win you many games. But um, you know, it was it was do or die in week two. Right, because I don't think eight and two would have gotten us in at the end. Right, the goal is to to be there after Thanksgiving. Um, eight and two is gonna would have cut it real close. Um, you know, probably too close for comfort. So mm. it it just had to be week by week. You know, this is this is the job to do this week, and and one at a time. We're gonna rip off the 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 nine in a row to to get in. Um, you know, with some some ups and downs and some kind of tense moments in in there but um mm. kids did a great job you know uh, one week to the next last week didn't matter and it was on to on to the next one and we were able to it will sneak in there after you had the conversation with your players um like you said it was week to week because you were in class l as was naugatuck so i was kind of was keeping track i mean i remember at a time that we almost potentially had a couple tech schools in the playoff mm -hmm. winnipeg yeah. and thames river and there was another tech school that's escaping my mind um, but ended up only being one tech school, but like you said, eight and two probably doesn't get you there because of the points and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, how were the kids, because these are young athletes and obviously media and their phones and everything else can affect as we know, how were they able to be so focused in a very good, cause you guys are in tier two, correct? Mm -hmm. So how were, how are they able to be so focused in the CCC, a very competitive football conference week to week? Right. We're in three actually, but a, a couple things, I think we had, we had a really good group of seniors um, who, who led the way, obviously starting with Victor, but then working down through, through um, each and every one of them. And that was the goal. That was the kind of the legacy they wanted to leave. Um, the other part of it, which, you know, coming off the, the season that we didn't play our, our, our juniors and some of our sophomores and even our freshmen that were playing um, kind of didn't know any better. You know, it was their first time through everything. So it was, you know, um, they were, they were, it was a coachable group as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what helped us, you know, I mean, they, they had a, a kind of never say die attitude too, you know, um, went back and forth with Hartford Public, whatever the final score that was, 52 to 48 or something ridiculous. And then two weeks later against Holland, we needed, 62 to whatever they had 50 so I, I can't you know the exact scores escaped me mm. um 
but just some some back and forth games that just that you know they were not gonna not gonna get beat. Do you feel like in some ways too, and I'm not saying that, you know, the young athletes are dumb by any means for not being a part, you know, not knowing mm-hmm. as far as having, having gone through the, you know, the ebbs and flows of a football season being so young, it would kind of was like, Oh, it's just another, like, not just another game, but like, you know what, we don't know what to expect. We're just going to go out and play hard. Did you feel I like that so. kind of was good yeah. in some ways? Yeah, it was, it was good. And, you know, like you said, it, and, and kind of, again, that group of seniors who set the tone, all right, that's what these guys are doing. And some of these guys have actually done this before. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and our, our coaches who were telling us these things, these guys have definitely done it before. So, you know, we don't really know any better, but to follow them. And, and um, you know, it was kind of how it worked out. Now, obviously the, the leader, the, the horse kind of helping this team was Victor Rosa and what he could do. I mean, I think you said over 40 touchdowns, something like that. Uh, a whole lot of them running. Were there times when you're on the sideline and you would just watch him just do his magic that you would just be like, wow, that's all I can say. Yeah. He, he, he made you look good calling plays. Right. Um, and um, you know, everybody around him too, because it, it wasn't a secret, you know, you, you show up on Friday, everybody knew, you know, who who the guy was that was going to carry it for us a whole bunch, which makes it hard on those those kids up front, you know, and the the receivers that are are, are blocking for them and, and things like that. Um, so it was a good group, but you know, um, kind of looking at this year, and we we talked about it, we we've, we've kind of um, said it, if not once a million times this summer, like he's not there anymore this year. You know, those we get a he might get a holding penalty on first down. It's first and twenty, right? And that's maybe wasn't all that big a deal with him back there. But you know, come come a couple of weeks this fall, that's going to be a big deal. So we got you know we've got work to do still with the guys that are that are coming back for us. And I've seen the posts on social media as far as uh, you know your guys always putting in work, and I I'm not surprised that Bristol Central is putting in the work in the off season. You guys always do, and you have for many many years. Um, do you feel like that even though losing Rosen, losing other players, big contributors, now you have those young players who went through now kind of the ebbs and flows. Now they get mm-hmm. another season and you do have to replace a lot of yards. But like you said, it doesn't have to be done with one player. You can get those yards with multiple players, multiple options, right? Sure. And I think if you expected it to be one kid, that's, that's not going to happen, you know? And they, they have, they put in a great summer. You know, we're in there three days a week. We're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two hours. And, and you know, we try to try to tell them that, you know, that's 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 not a ton of time. We get it. You guys are on summer vacation. Your kids go be kids after that. But we're going to lock in for two hours, three times a week and, and kind of um, get the work in that, that we need to. And they've, they've done a good job. I think they're, you know, you get to this time of the summer and it's, it's kind of like, all right, like we're, we're ready to get started with with something a little different you know you can only lift and, and condition um kind of keep them uh interested and in, in that for so like they're 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 ready to go um you know the other thing they that we've we've told them is people write you off this year you know, they don't have rose anymore that's it so the the motivation piece kind of writes itself on on some of that stuff because they've heard it we've heard it and Okay, cool. We'll, we'll see. We'll see soon. Coach, are you going into the weight room kind of showing these boys up a little bit on the bench? Absolutely not. I had to stay home the other day. My back hurt. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. They do know, though, when they hear you, don't do not do anything bad because, you know, don't do that, right? Yeah, yeah. And and uh, our whole staff has been really good. You know, a bunch of the guys have been with me for a number of years. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they've all, you know, done a, a real good job uh, over the summer um, getting us to this point. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll get to the actual, actual football part really soon here. Now, what players, if, if, you know, if you don't mind sharing as far as who's kind of uh, showing up in the weight room? I know practices haven't started yet. But mm-hmm. who's been showing up in the weight room and been really impressive so far? Yeah, we've had really good, um, you know, attendance numbers. We track everything, right? So mm-hmm. our attendance has been been really good all summer. And, and you know, um, 
couple of our guys from from last year. Um, Trey Blair's an all league kid coming back for us, a, a slot receiver, defensive back. Uh, Nick Salinas, who's going to be in the in the mix at quarterback, has has been really consistent all summer. Um, you know, a couple other guys that are, are kind of saw. You know, we we do have a fair amount of kids that saw time last year. Um, Julius Powell is another big uh, offensive defensive lineman that was an all league kid. Uh, Mason Stokes, Anthony Polino. Um, you know, those are the kind of some of the names that we're going to rely on, and then our. Our, our so I love our sophomore class. I think our, our group of kids that are about to be sophomores right now got a chance to do some really good things by the time um, they leave. There's there's really good numbers. Um, some kids that have worked really hard all summer. You know, it's a it's, it's a big jump from freshman to varsity. Um, but I I can certainly picture some of those kids making that jump in a couple of weeks here. Now, coach, you mentioned before when we were talking about the weight room that. They've heard the noise of, you know, the chatter about Rosa being gone and that Central is going to take a decline. Uh, why? I, I shouldn't say why, but do you feel like that that could be maybe some extra motivation for these guys as far as in the offseason and when practices begin to? Yeah, I think it absolutely. They don't want to hear that, you know, um, and, and as, you know, look, at we're, we're replacing the, the Gatorade player of the year, or whatever, you know, a million other awards that he won last year so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be hard you know um i don't think we have any 60 point nights in us like we did last year you know so we're gonna have to be better in a lot of phases but um so it is you know not i, I don't know that many schools replace one kid of that caliber with with the next and just kind of keep it rolling you know it's, it's high school football in connecticut um so we're gonna we're gonna go out and compete um you know we've kind of beefed up our our um our scrimmage uh, preseason schedule this year. We're going to go out to um, to Cromwell. Coach Bennett was good enough to have us out there, so we can see Cromwell and Killingly and 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 Foreign at a, a jamboree. Um, really tried to kind of uh, uh, beef things up um, with a in terms of preseason competition this year, just to really get an idea of you know what it's going to look like and what level we're going to need to be at. And, you know, if you want to do a scrimmage, I mean, why not do it with some of the best guys in, in high school football? You mentioned Bennett with Portland Cromwell, Coach Neal, who is the, the king of RPO, the run people over. Over, sure. I should say, over, because he's got that <laughs> accent. Yeah, yeah. But with Killingly. And then yeah. you got Coach Drew with Foreign, who's always doing fine work down there. Yeah. And I think that's, that's great, Coach. And, uh, you know, scrimmages are so important. And I feel like, I'm not saying coaches, but I feel like some players kind of maybe – like, you know, it's a scrimmage, it's whatever, but it's important because a lot of times you can really see who you are as a team early on in those scrimmages. They're important. Yeah. And, you know, we don't have a ton of time to get ready either. We don't have a ton of time to assess all that and go through, you know, we've got really three weeks in pads. In the fourth week you're into, you're into game prep that Monday, you know, so um, there's not a ton of time, uh, you know, scheduling some, some strong programs and we just love, two uh defending state champions there that day <laughs> you know, yeah especially like we could, only, yeah in Portland. we can beef it up so um now we're excited about it um it'll be a good test it'll be a good gauge to see where we're at and, and what we need to improve on coach before i let you go and i appreciate you coming on i just wanted to get your comment as far as the six playoff champions now they've moved to six it was four i think it was 2004 to 2009 i think was the last time it was six um, you and I were kind of going back and forth about it a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts as far as now ha having six state championship teams? Yeah, you know, I have paid pretty close attention to it. Um, and I know some people say it's watered down. Connecticut's a small state, but kind of going through it last season, you know, and us qualifying for the, the state tournament for the first time in a, a number of years, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a, a, a special experience. And, and, you know, I don't think it hurts to um, get more kids involved in that. Um, on the flip side, uh, you know, I, I wish we could have done a little more to maybe balance out um, the divisions, you know. Um, and I don't say that just because we landed in NL. I'm fine with that. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. But, you know, we play three out of our 10 games are against Class L schools. And the rest are either double MM or double L. Um, I just, I think, 
you know, I don't have a perfect solution for it. I do think we missed uh, an opportunity to um, maybe do a little more than just the traditional take your enrollment and, and split it up that way. But um, yeah, more teams are in and, and you know, I, I truly don't think there's another way to do it uh, unless you start to sacrifice Thanksgiving and um, you know, whether or not we're ready to start making that move in the state. I don't know that those decisions are for people that get paid a lot more than you and I do. So um, we'll let them do that. But, you know, they want to get more kids, more teams involved. Um, mm -hmm. it's certainly one way to do it. And that's what we'll, we'll have six state champions at the end of it. As I told Sean from game time, and he said it's, it's an imperfect system. Um, there's certain things that we could be potentially moving towards as what we've seen with some of the classes. I know I think double S and uh, there's another one that has a lot of the co-op and the smaller schools and such, the tech schools. So we could be heading that way. I don't know if we're going to see a public school for three and then a, a private school, school of choice for another. It's hard to say. Again, it's you coach, I broadcast. Let's just do what we do best, right? That's it. We'll play them, <laughs> play whoever they put on there. No sense complaining about it. And for me, I just want to broadcast games and do and give the give the radio world and TV world what we want to see, which is good football, good talent, and give these coaches like yourself and players the spotlight you guys deserve. I just want to that's, do that. That's, that's all. it, man. You do, you know, you do a good job with it. Like I, I said to you, you know, all the time uh, during all the the nonsense with the pandemic that year this was kind of this was one of the good things that came out of it right that's when you started kind of doing this and having kids on and coaches on and we're able to kind of you know be a little bit of a light when there was a whole bunch of bad stuff happening so oh, we were wow. able to keep it going now that we're back to back to pretty much normal here and, you know i think that's great you know all the all the uh kind of extra work you put in to promote um high school sports in connecticut it's much appreciated I appreciate that. And also too, I, I bet, you know, I've had the pleasure to be able to hit, you know, have on Dathan Hickey. And I feel like every time I talk to him, I come back a better person. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you could agree too. I mean, he's, I feel like he could run a fortune 500 company. I really yeah, did, did a, a, a youth camp down here a couple of weeks ago. We brought up about Christ. He must have had 20 kids from Yale up here running stations and, you know, it was a free clinic. He had about 60, 70 little kids running around the, the youth football field so you know he did a real good job with that so excited to see him play his his senior year over there coach is always great to be able to have you on the podcast i appreciate the kind words and hopefully hopefully i'll be able to do a bristol central game in the playoffs you know sometime in the near future that'd be sounds fun. good my friend i appreciate it. that'll wrap things up here in the connecticut sports talent show so next time stay safe we're gonna see these stands for connecticut town i'm rj find them all enjoy this today everybody and be well